We received a ton of questions in the comments from you guys asking about CVT transmissions and their reliability. So today we're gonna dive into the top three most common asked questions. Let's get to it. You should service your CVT transmission fluid every 30,000 miles. Uh, every manufacturer is going to have a slightly different recommendation. So uh, you should refer to your owner's manual uh, and more impor importantly, refer to the service professional you trust. Uh, unfortunately, vehicle manufacturers, they make their money building and selling cars. Uh, there is not uh, an extra amount of money they make by making your vehicle last 200,000 miles like I like to drive my vehicles to. So I would say even though manufacturers have a, a very specific recommendation, we're even seeing a lot of manufacturers telling people that their transmission has a lifetime fill. Uh, we're all smart enough to know that uh, fluid has not advanced enough over the years to last a lifetime. Uh, if you're somebody that uh, buys a new car and turns it in every three years, then yes, it's a lifetime fill uh, for the lifetime you're gonna own the vehicle. But if you're like me that wants a good, inexpensive, but reliable vehicle that you can drive 200,000 miles or more, uh, service the transmission every 30,000 miles. Vehicle manufacturers are under uh, a lot of pressure um, for what's called CAFE standards. So CAFE standards, it best basically is regulations that grade vehicle manufacturers on things like fuel economy, uh, kind of like their carbon footprint, how much emissions they put off, and even how much waste they have. So uh, I feel like manufacturers are actually stretching the intervals you go in between your oil changes. They're stretching the intervals you go in between servicing fluids that are important, like the fluid in your CVT transmission, due to better their score on that CAFE standard. So I firmly believe they're not stretching the, their recommended services in your best interest. I feel like they're just doing that in order to, to better their score. Uh, and meet the regulations, to be honest. So unless you're someone that buys a vehicle uh, new every three years, uh, if you're someone like me that drives a vehicle uh, for as long as you possibly can and keep it reliable as long as you can, I would be very reluctant to follow a uh, manufacturer's recommendation on uh, when to service your, your fluid. Uh, if it seems unrealistic, uh, I would be, I'd be wary. Um, it, if it seems unrealistic, it's probably unrealistic. So do your homework, uh, talk to your service professional that you trust, and uh, use a little common sense on that. Once again, my answer that I do on my own vehicles, I own many CVT transmissions. I service mine every 30,000 miles, and uh, not to jinx myself, but uh, I got some getting up there in the age and uh, haven't had one fail yet. So the majority of newer cars uh, are no longer equipped with uh, a dipstick to actually view the fluid level and quality. So most, uh, most of the time, uh, CVT transmission services are due just based off of miles in use. Each manufacturer has a very specific process for checking fluid level in CVT transmissions. It's fairly complicated. Uh, here in our shop, we actually utilize a scan tool we're actually monitoring the transmission temperatures on most models um, while usually we're removing uh, some kind of plug that once it gets to a certain uh, temperature internally there's like a fill plug or a check level plug uh, that you have to watch for so much fluid to be coming out of or, or something similar uh, once again it's fairly complicated uh, toward my recommendation is if you have a CVT transmission, uh, more often than not, you should probably be trusting that to uh, whoever your trusted service professional is. So the most common way to service a CVT transmission is just to simply drain and refill the fluid. Um, some CVT transmissions though, they still come equipped with uh, uh, transmission cooler lines or hoses. If we have access to those lines or hoses, we actually prefer to do a, a fluid exchange where we can actually tie into those hoses 
uh, fill a machine up with new CVD transmission and then use the transmission's pressure to kind of pump out a quart of fluid while it pumps in a quart where we get a full fluid exchange. But I would say eight out of 10 times, uh, uh, the only way you can do it is just by, by draining and filling them. So keep in mind on a drain and fill. So if you drain uh, a CVT transmission, you're generally gonna get four, five quarts, somewhere out around there. Basically about 50% of the fluid out of the transmission. The other 50% of the fluid is contained in the torque converter. You know, you got that big torque converter that the fluid stays in there. Uh, when the transmission's not operating, it's just sitting there, it's gonna stay in there. It's not gonna drain out. Uh, you got a valve body, you got other things uh, inside this uh, transmission that are gonna hold fluid even though you drain it out. So then what's gonna happen is you're going to go and refill it, right? You, you drain four or five quarts out, you put four or five new quarts in it. As soon as you start the engine of the vehicle and engage that transmission, it then mixes that 50% new fluid with the 50% old fluid. Uh, that's better than doing nothing but a better way to do it, and the way we do it if we have to do a drain and fill, we do the same process twice. Uh, so we drain the fluid out, get everything out that'll come out. We add fluid back in it. We start the vehicle. Uh, we let it run for a while to get up temp. We actually run it uh, park, reverse, neutral drive. We kind of run it through the paces a few times, shut the vehicle off, and then we drain it all out again top it off again um, and then do the same thing. Let it warm up, run it through the gears. And then the final stage after doing a drain and fill, uh, most important is there's a very specific process to make sure uh, it is set at the, the proper fluid level. Because uh, once again, it's not like the good old days when you could pull out the dipstick and say, yes, transmission is full or oh no, it's a little bit low, I need to add some. Uh, there's actually a whole process of uh, we're using scan tools more often than not. Very specific process every manufacturer has for set and fluid level. And these things are very sensitive, very, very important to make sure you're using the right fluid and setting that fluid level uh, perfectly uh, in the right range. At our shop, we prefer to do a complete fluid exchange. So once again, if a CVT transmission in your vehicle has a cooler, uh, uh, an external cooler, or even uh, some of them still use the uh, cooler in the side of the radiator, very rare to see anymore. But as long as it has lines, uh, fluid lines or hoses, and we have access to them, we generally have the adapters here uh, to where we can actually utilize the machine we have to do a, a complete fluid exchange. So. What we do is we actually add a cleaner into the existing CVT fluid in a vehicle. We actually operate that thing, usually about 10 minutes or so, let those cleaners get in there. They've got a binding agent in them that will actually make uh, some of the gunk inside the fluid actually stick to the fluid. Uh, we then shut the vehicle off. We gain access to those lines or hoses. Uh, we connect uh, disconnect those lines and connect them directly uh, to our machine. We then fill the machine up generally with about 10 to 12 quarts of whatever CVT fluid is required for your vehicle. Um, at this point, we actually start the vehicle and as the transmission runs and, and pressurizes, the machine will start to allow the transmission to slowly push uh, fluid out uh, into a waste tank as it pushes fluid in at the same rate. So it basically is kind of like, uh, kind of like doing a, a, a blood transfusion. You know, it's basically as it pumps out about a quarter fluid, it's pumping in a quarter fluid, keeps going through that cycle until we get about 99% of that fluid out of your vehicle. Uh, then the next step, obviously shut the vehicle off, shut the machine off, uh, disconnect the machine, reconnect those hoses and lines, make sure everything's nice and clean and torqued right. And then, once again, very important, we go through the process of making sure that fluid level is set at the right spot. Uh, uh, using the scan tool, using whatever the process is, uh, we make sure we follow it uh, every time and we make sure that fluid level is set to the right spot. Very, very important. Use the right fluid, uh, use the right process, make sure that fluid level is set right. I enjoy bringing content to you to help you uh, make good buying decisions, servicing decisions, 
Uh, my Ask and Return, uh, like this video, uh, consider subscribing to our channel, and then hit us up in the comments. We actually like to monitor those and get back to you as quickly as we can. And we utilize a lot of your comments and questions for uh, what video and what content to bring to you next. So uh, thanks for liking us and uh, consider subscribing to our channel.